two degrees Celsius to be exact. That's uh, two degrees above the freezing temperature of water for all my American uh, friends. It's gravel specific season. in shock and awe. This bike lane is still going. I'm going to meet up with Dan now. Big day. Maybe not a big day. I don't know. Dan was still asleep. I woke him up. He burped a lot. I don't understand that. Who burps that much when they wake up? Well, that, um, that took, that took like way longer than I expected it to. Do you ever, do you ever hear like a task or like you have a task and then you're like pretty unrealistic about how long it will truly take and then you plan a million other things throughout the day and you're like, yeah, what a productive day I'm about to have. And then the first thing is like, is like 10 hours. That is like, uh, well, it's like every day for me. <laughs> okay. There's a, uh, there's like a little, a tiny little thing that I want to address. Um, I don't think this is gonna come as a surprise to, to like a lot of you, especially a lot of you who've been around for a long time, but anyone who's kind of like new, maybe within the last two, two-ish months. Because, uh, because, and uh, there's been a lot of this, 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 a little bit and a little bit less of this. That perhaps, uh, that perhaps it's like believed that my heart is only set on, uh, that my heart is like only set on older retro bikes and builds um, and, and that I'm like not interested in this. Not true. I have an equal amount of interest in stuff like this as I do older bikes. The thing about these is uh, they're a little more annoying to work on and they're way more money. And it's also just like a little harder to like take a chance with ideas on, on something like this than it is on, uh, you know, mass produced older bikes that don't really have a whole lot of uh, say jazziness to go with it. So uh, if you're new here, and it feels like when something like this pops up, it like, it seems sort of out of character. It's not. Expect, as time progresses and things go on, uh, an equal amount of content, including stuff like this, as stuff like this. Believe it or not, I actually don't have a preference over retro or modern bikes. However, I do have, well, I have a major preference over the, the lack of money involved for doing like, relatively involved projects with older bikes uh, than I do newer ones. And that's, that's really what it boils down to. That's especially true for the last like two or three months. Older bikes, ideas, didn't cost a lot, was able to do them. These, like I basically, I have to like, I have to really ask companies that want to send stuff like that for like extra stuff so that I can put them together. It's like the only way to make them work. Okay. Prime example, this thing. Somehow, Colin gets from this part of the trail and then takes a sharp right and gets up this. It doesn't look like much, but I just tried it. It's not that easy. Oh, that stump's right there to hit you in the head. Oh, nice. Yeah. <laughs> okay, let's keep going. <laughs> We're not gonna do the big rock roll thing, are you? You could look at it again. <sighs> Being afraid of this is very funny. There's no need to be afraid of it.
I should try that on the rock hopper. I can get up that. Yeah? It's way easier to get up here that way than to try and walk it. Probably. I'm certain there's another way to get back from here. I've done this before without slipping. Bit of uh, extreme rampage action happening over here. What happened here? So yeah, good reminder, very good reminder of one of our absolute favorite spin dat sayings, quotes, whatever you want to call it. Um, every bike is a good time. There's no discrimination here. I, uh, you know, I, I think it would be a little bit ridiculous for me to even try and go as far as to say uh, this untrue statement that like retro bikes are better than new bikes. Um, there's no way, there's no way that I could do what I do on this thing, the stuff that I'm interested in, having, uh, you know, such a big BMX influence, there's no way that I could safely, day after day, do the stuff that I like to do with this thing, though I'm not a pro athlete. There's no way I could do it on a retro bike. It would break. Or if it didn't eventually break after enough of it, which I think it would, um, it just, it kind of would be like not that enjoyable. You know, like, like riding rock rolls and like doing the odd drop and definitely riding cross country on this thing, flow trails. It is super fun. I've proved that. I've written this thing in videos in the past showing, yes, it can absolutely be done, but I don't, I wouldn't go as far as to consider it a replacement or like, uh, you know, adequate for. Yeah, I think you get what I'm, I think you get it. But I refuse to be titled the retro bicycle guy. I'm not the retro bicycle guy. Um, I'm gonna finish, I just wanna finish this video with a little, like a small little advertisement. I did a web interview for the Shred Summit. The proceeds from the Shred Summit will be going towards the bike project. The bike project is very much a charity that I believe in. It gets refugees, people who've gotten away from terrible situations in, in countries that they're in, in new countries. It gets them a bicycle. It gets them a way to get around. I'm gonna, I'm gonna link that in, uh, in the description below. Uh, if you don't mind checking it out, appreciate it immensely. All right, all right, tomorrow we're probably gonna open a fat bike. Thank you.